There we go. Okay, so what's on the program today? Got some requests for straight pool, which I think is awesome because I feel, uh, I hate to say it, but straight pool is kind of like a, a dying game where years ago, if you watched uh, maybe The Hustler, uh, the old movie, back in the day, that's uh, what a lot of people were playing. That was straight pool. And uh, I think it's an awesome game, personally, because of the fact that if you're playing well, there's no way you can get stopped. Only with some bad luck on a break shot where you scratch off a ball or whatever. But besides that, I think nowadays with all the alternate break formats, and it's more of a composure and it's hard to really blow up a match and dominate easily. Where in straight pool, you can still do that. If you're playing well, you can just dominate the whole game. Boom, run 100 and out, 125 and out. And uh, I think it's just fun, you know, if you've, if you've prepared well and nowadays we only kind of play that uh, Dutch competition and European championships. But if you catch that groove, it's an amazing feeling. And uh, it's a great game to practice, uh, I feel, for eight ball. And vice versa, eight ball for straight pool because you're constantly making puzzles in your head and both games help each other. There's a statement that says straight pool is the founder for all other games. I totally disagree and I'm a straight pool fan, but I totally disagree because you're not kicking a ball in straight pool, you're not jumping, you're not breaking, you're hardly playing the same kind of saves as in nine ball or ten ball. So, and basically all you're doing is making medium to medium long shots or short shots. So I think personally, if you want to talk about games that are foundation games for other games, I would talk about Filipino rotation and one pocket and maybe even bank pool. Those three combined and then add in some billiards and three cushion. If you combine that, then you're like a, a maniac <laughs> for all the arsenal you're going to have. Uh, look at Ephraim, right? So, uh, we're gonna um, run some racks, talk about some break shots, key shots, patterns, uh, just things that come up, we're gonna have some fun, trying to be a little interactive, where if I ask a question, like what do you see, what's the break shot, what's the key shot, just fire away in the, in the stream, uh, or in the Facebook, I'm gonna put it on, so... I can see your reactions. Here we go. How's it going, guys? And um, this will be uploaded later on my YouTube channel. Please head over there and subscribe. There's a ton of workouts and lessons, nine ball patterns, eight ball patterns. Now we're doing straight pool. So let's do it. Now, if you're playing alone against the ghost, which basically means is you're setting up your first break ball and just trying to make a high run. Uh, I always used to start with one of these break balls, but I or one of these, like this. This works really nice. But after watching uh, at the Derby City, I saw John Schmidt. He's of course a straight pool expert. A lot of guys. And him, they were starting with a ball in the middle. And this works actually really good because the cue ball uh, gets stopped by these two balls. So it kind of stays here right away or maybe just heads over to this area. You get a really nice spread and the rack is wide open. So I've been starting to do this one the last couple of years. So this is just a good tip. So let's see if we can... Pull that one off right away and see if we can make a run and talk uh, about some patterns that come up. All right, that's great. That's that's nice. There's no shot there. 
Okay. Well, that's about... Wait, I got a combination. That's about as crazy as it gets there right away. But, I'm talking about it's hard to get unlucky and stuff, but on the brake shot, it does happen. And you see most of the funniest thing happen on the brake shot. So here, there's no secret to this. I have to try and make this 10-6 combo to keep my run going. Uh, now maybe for some amateur players, sometimes they focus too much of their trouble just by making the ball and then they run into another problem and another problem. I'm seeing already if I just make this ball, I might come back down table and have nothing again. So I'm thinking, okay, where can I put the cue ball a little bit where at least I'm going to have perhaps a 12 or the 4. So I don't want to hit this 100 miles an hour. I just want to focus on making the 6. It's a thin cut. Got the sun in my eye, that's nice. That's a nice little shot. So, we're back in action. Okay, guys, what do we see? The rack is still pretty closed. So, I don't think I set up this ball really well in the middle of the table, because normally you get a little more action. So this is a tough, tough little starter here. Um, so what I'm thinking right away, I don't have many more balls to open up this rack. I gotta, I gotta start moving quickly, right? There's, there's not much to, to choose from here. Everything's blocking each other. Um, if I would play position now on the 12th, and I get out of line, I'm pretty much done. So I'm thinking, I'm going to take a chance right here and I'll try to open up some more balls because otherwise it might be end of run. So I'm going to go in off the side rail and try to create something. Oh my lord. Oh, guys, that's what happens sometimes in life. You know what? No, I'm going to put this ball back. At least I'm giving you some amusement on this Friday morning. So, let's just keep our run going. We're all human. But I see something now here. If I make this 7, then I can play position on this 15. And then what I see is this 8 ball or this 5 ball can go into this corner pocket and I can open up these balls. So if I play 7, 15, come around for the 4, then I have the 8 open up these balls and hopefully I get a nice break ball from there. Whew, I made a really bad miscue there, hallelujah. So, we've got to play for about the middle of the table. There, that's nice. And I'm thinking, if I stop this ball, I can use the eight and roll through these balls. And then this is what's called a backup ball or a safety valve. If I roll through these balls, the cue ball will end up there and I'm gonna have the five. Or if I decide to draw a little bit, I still have the five. Normally a more clear backup ball would be more close to the pockets. 
So if you get stuck in the rack, you will always have one of those. That's a really good thing to look for. Insurance ball, backup ball, safety ball. Keep that in mind. That is super important. So basically just stop this one. <clears throat> Let's see. What do we have? If I roll in this ball, I want to try to open them up a little bit more. I'm going through the 11. 11 hits the 1. 11 will go there, and then hopefully the cue ball will hit the 3, and then everything's open. I'm not guaranteed to get a, a great break shot here, but everything should be open after this ball. greatest shot but still I have that five what I was talking about I have to get going a little bit here guys let's see but this is good practice so I see still a lot of trouble I have I have to make a Tricky shot on the five. These two balls can go there, but the nine is blocking. And I virtually have no break shot yet, except maybe the 12 later on. So this is a, a tricky opening rack, guys. First, I have to make this ball. I feel like a total beginner now. <laughs> I was hoping for a little bit more open rack right out of the gate. I have to do all kinds of Houdini stuff. But that's how it is. Oh boy. Stay down in this ball. Tricky shot. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, let's take care of, of trouble here. Let's see. If I make this nine, what are my options? I can come above the nine, come around, and have take care of the one and the three. Uh, I could also... Roll into the one three from here, and perhaps the three can come here for a break shot. Let's see if I come here, that might work. That might work, guys. Gotta be creative here. create something hit the side of this one ball Does that come out well I think it's too low I think it's a hair too low okay so What do you guys see? Any suggestions? <clears throat> if this 10 ball would be a little closer to the side, that would be a great break shot from here or here. But it's a little bit high. So I can't really hit it that hard. The angle's a little bit a little bit freaky. Um, Let's see. Just gonna double check the string. No, that's too low. The 14 from here, I 
could use it, two rails coming to a rack. I think that's my best option. I can use the 10 as the key ball, so that's the ball before the brake shot. Come over here, and I think I'm going to go two rails into the pack. I think that's the best chance I have to continue my run. So I'm going to take care of these three balls here. back for the 10 after the 3. Around here. <clears throat> Just at an angle. And then I want to try to come around here. Just bounce off the rail a little bit. Okay, that was a tough first rack with nothing really standard about it. And I hope start seeing a little bit more standard straight pull stuff but that's how it is sometimes guys if you're maybe struggling for a little bit in a run you have to use all the knowledge you have and sometimes you're going to end up with a really weird break shot but here's a good tip that somebody uh, said years ago I think it was, uh, I'm not sure if it was Willy Moscone or another great straight pool player. He was asked, what's the ideal break shot? And he said, kind of any shot with the right angle can be an ideal break shot. So that means even, for example, if you have a ball here and you get the cue ball under it with a right angle and you blast off the side, that can be an ideal break shot. Now this one, this is not an easy shot, but I have a good angle. So if I come two rails around, hit the back of the stack, it could still be an ideal break shot. You know what I mean? So don't put too much pressure on yourself that everything has to be perfect and you always need this break shot right here or here. It's never going to happen. You've got to be uh, adapting to certain situations. Okay. So I want to try to hit the rail there, got to put some speed on this. See that's not bad, I have the 10 in the side and I have a chance to continue my run. Now again guys, my advice is, the rack is still pretty tight, don't be too, too patient picking off all kinds of balls, I'm more for going into them again and pretty firm. I want to get the rack open as quick as I can, but that's just my personal preference. So I'm thinking just rolling this ball in, taking the 6 or the 5, the 5 can work really well, come into this little glove here and open up a bunch of balls. So I could play, I could play 10, 13, 1 and then I'm going to have the 6 or the 5 and blast in them again. Stay down in this ball. That's a little bit too hard. Let's see what I have. I overran it a little bit for the 13. 
but I can still draw back into here and then play the 6-5 or if I come good enough I can play the 5 right away I think that's what I'm going to do I'm going to try and draw into the 1 because I'm always guaranteed for the 6 I'm, if I hit it on this side I have the 12 I still have many good options I can't really stop it for the 1 that's why I don't want to do that There, see that's fine. And now you can choose whatever you want. You can shoot the 12, nice and easy, go into them. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Because I said I don't wanna wait too long, so I don't wanna break my own rule. Let's see. Go into these balls. Pretty decent. Okay, here's a question. Time to get a little interactive. Do you guys see a break shot for when this rack is almost over? Do you see a break shot? And do you maybe see a key ball? The key ball is the shot before the break shot. And ideally, a key ball would be a stop shot. If you can play a nice pattern or find a nice pattern, your ideal situation is stop, stop for the breaker. So the two last shots would be very little cue ball movement. Write down if you see anything. And if you're on YouTube later on, press pause, look at the layout, and let your, let your brain do a little work, and come up with a break shot and a key ball. Ooh, everybody's lazy this morning. No replies. All right. What about uh, what about the five guys? You like that? Too close to the rack. What about the three? It's too high. What about the six? Six is nice, and the fifteen is nice. Now, what about the key ball? Do you guys see a key ball? Remember the key ball? The one ball, if we kind of stop the one or just bring it here, that's really nice for the six. So that's what I'm seeing right away at this moment. I'm seeing options with the one and the six and perhaps the 15. But I also see a little bit of trouble. I see these two balls. They won't go here, but I can make the 11 there and I can use perhaps the 15 to come there. And I still have some congestion on this side. Now, if I make the 5 from here, I can open up these two balls pretty nicely. So I think I want to do that pretty fast. Let me think. And this is where your 9 ball stroke can come in handy because I can play 3 rails. Boom, boom, boom. And come here for the five. So I don't have to baby roll it. I can let my stroke out and play around the table for the five ball. Decent. And now I can draw into the seven and have the eight then that problem is solved. That opens up the 6 even more. That was the only thing I was a little bit afraid of. 
Okay. So I made myself a new little problem with knocking nine over to these balls. Uh, let's see. So if I if I bounce off the rail, I can use the eight ball and go into those balls. Let's do that. Use the fifteen. soft. Um, I think I will make contact with the 9 and then I could have the 2 next. It's not ideal guys. I could also use the 7 now and go into them like this. I think that, that looks better. Two. Let's look at uh, an end game scenario now. <clears throat> These three balls are sitting really nice for end game. If I get on the one, I can use the three to bounce off the reel for the six. So basically, I want to take care of these four balls. Uh, Let's see, I first have to make this two, and I'm going to hit the eight. I think the eight will go down table a little bit, but I will deal with that later. Okay. Interesting developments. So, what do we have? I can make the three. I can make a combination. Uh, and what's also a nice key ball, guys, if I fall on this 9, I can use the 11 as a key ball. Just bounce off the rail and come here for the 6. So, because I might have to shoot this one ball now, I have to produce another key ball to play position for the six. So let's see. Uh, yeah, I think I'm just going to roll the combination in, guys. Use the three. That ball will be here, and then come down to the table for the nine, and then the 11 off the rail to the middle of the table. A little bit of adjustment to my pattern. That's okay. So here I want to get kind of into this area for the nine, where I don't have to do a lot of work anymore. A little bit of left hand spin. soft. I think I can still do it. If I come here, it should still be alright. A little bit of right spin. And now, off the rail, towards the middle of the table. And this is really where you're going to train your speed control. These shots are critical. A lot of amateurs underrun or overrun their speed on these shots. And I 
I've done that myself many times when I was learning this game. So, a little bit of adjustment done. We got through the rack. Let's see if we can run another one. So I think we're on a run of uh, 26. Let's mark it down. Just for the fun of it. There. Now, when you've seen me play straight pool, you've seen me do this a lot on break shots. Why am I doing that? I'm finding the 90 degree angle of the cue ball after it makes contact with the break shot. So what does that mean? Cue ball will hit the six there. Where is it going to go after that? That's what I'm trying to figure out. 90 degree angle determines that. You take one leg of your 90 degree and this is the second leg. So it's there. That's where the cue ball is going to go. And a mistake I used to make before is I put my stick here, but that's not how thick a ball is. A ball is actually this thick, so you have to take the middle of that, which is there. It's not next to the six, it's a little bit out. So I can see I'm going to hit the low side of the 13. For me, when I hit the low side of a ball, always draw. Okay? If you're going to hit it full in the face, Always use a stop shot, otherwise you're going to get stuck on that ball. You want to punch it off that ball again. And don't baby it. Don't hit it 100 miles an hour, but don't baby it. Medium firm stroke, what you can use on your technique. Okay? If you feel you're starting to twitch and turn, then you have to hit it a little more clean. If you have a great stroke, you can put a little more power in. Okay. And also for amateurs, this is, a, this is a big tip, the choice is made now. We know how we're going to hit the rack, we know where we have to hit the cue ball, now forget about the rack. Now it's all about making this ball, right? Put a trick in your mind, forget about this. Just draw the ball in and, and the rest, trust it, it will come automatically. Otherwise your focus is going to be on two different things and you will end up missing the ball. So that was with a little bit of draw. Getting pretty, pretty tricky layouts. However, <clears throat> see, I can't really make contact with this 15 with one of these balls, but I can make this 15 ball rail first pretty comfortably, pretty easily. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go rail first. And I'm not going to hit it too hard because then I end up here. I want to just come off the rail and get shape on the 10. If I come here on the 10, I can maybe go into a rack again like this. If I come straight, I want to use one of these two balls to open up the rack again. That's how I'm looking ahead of what's available. <clears throat> Just a little bit of right spin. So I came with that shorter angle. Okay. So this option is not available to me anymore at this moment. And I don't want to wait too long to open them up again. So here again I'm checking the angle, this would be 90 degrees, that would come under 
I would scratch. So I have to draw a little bit to make contact with the one. And then I'm going to open up at least four balls, I think. <clears throat> so that's what I want to do. Okay. See, that's why I'm, I'm checking a lot that 90 degree angle to see where I'm going to make contact. And then basically it's not about luck or chance, it's about actually seeing where the ball is going to contact other balls and I can kind of visualize and predict what's going to happen. So if I'm unlucky there, it could also be I didn't look good enough, okay? So do you guys see a break shot? Anybody awake over there? Do you guys see a break shot? Ah, we get some more comments, that's great. Alright, I see two break shots from here. The 12 is really nice. If it's around the height of the spot, that's a really good starting position to look at. Also maybe one or two balls lower. This area. And you can always, great tip guys, if you want to pick up this game, you can use the rack. Right? You can hover over the spot like this, and then you can visually see what's available to you. You see that the 12 is looking really good, and the 4 is not too bad either, either if you end up somewhere here with the cue ball. So use the rack. Big tool. Okay. So, continue the run. Still a little bit of trouble. This one and nine, they can only go there. So I need to use, I have to get on this side of the table to take care of business on these guys, okay? Uh, first, let me make this five and stop the cue ball off the three a little bit. There, things are opening up nice now. <coughs> Let's see. The one can go there. Um, then, I think that's what I want to do. It's time to take care of these problems. I'm going to do 14-8, take care of the 1, and probably shoot the 11. I'm here for the 4, then I'm going to shoot the 9, and then we're going to take care of these 3 down here. There's, there's actually two nice key balls, the 13 and the 7. So these, are, these balls we're going to save for last, okay? stuck. I just play it here for the 11. Then we're going to come up for that four ball. And now I want to play shape for the nine. And I want to be above the 9, that way I can go 2 rails around, I can go 1 rail up, it leaves me many more options. If I get straight in on the 9, now I don't have as much freedom and I might even hit the 12, so give yourself some room. Too hard. <laughs> oh boy. Some 
sometimes it's not easy talking and playing. But all I have to do is make this ball and come around, and these are all here for the taking. So just focus on getting anywhere here. Okay? But I made it a little bit harder on myself, and I want to keep this run going. Nope. No good. That happens, guys. Let's keep it going. Put it back to zero. I came too high. You know why that was? Because when I was coming down, I was actually thinking I could also play it for this side on the nine. It gives me more freedom. And I didn't get up. I just shot the ball. Got punished for it. That's okay. That's what happens. It's training. So here, we go 13, pick up this nine ball, come back for the three and seven. Otherwise the nine ball later on could give us some trouble. Two rails around, and if I get straight on the seven, that's nice. I can use the three as a key ball. Just like that. So I'm going to do seven, three, and then the twelve is a breaker. Back around the middle of the table for kind of the same break shot we had in the previous rack or this rack. Like that. Okay, too bad I missed that ball. That's how it is. Let's see if I can run a quick hundred for you guys. <laughs> this time. So we ended up with what? Three balls here? One, two, three. Thank you. 13, 9, oh, 4. All right. So let's use our 90 degree angle again and see where we're going to hit the rack after making contact. Here we go. That's one part of my 90 degrees, and I can use the stripes on my cue to see the other part. And then I have a great starting point. So again, I see I'm going to make contact with the 11 on the low side. And if I fall in between two balls, I also want to draw it. So here, low on the 11, draw. And if it would even be a little bit lower, also draw. It's my personal preference. <clears throat> so again, forget about the rack now and focus fully on the object ball. That's what happens a lot. <clears throat> Where you come off this rail, the spin takes effect and you Punch it out two rails. Some players, like uh, a shout out to my teammate in Germany, uh, Roszkowski, Andreas Roszkowski, he plays those shots with inside spin. So not with right spin, he plays them with inside. Makes the shot a little bit tougher, but what he does actually, he draws them off the rail, and then the spin brings them a little bit back out to the middle. I mean, if you see it, it's really pretty. Uh, I personally think it's a little bit dangerous for the shot, but if you master it, why not? You know, go for it. So that's what he does a lot. Okay. Let's pick up the speed a little bit. I see a break shot right away. 11. Okay. There's a key ball next to it. The 7 we can use. Play shape for the 9. Or, what's also great, guys. If there's a ball in the kitchen. And it's a little bit off the rail like this. Or here. Or here. Like the 13. 
That's also a nice key ball because you can do a lot of stuff with it. If you, if you come here, you can come off the rail and you're already on the right side of the table coming into the shot on the break shot. So don't be afraid to leave that as a key ball, for example. So, there's also some trouble again. 2, 5, 10, this little group. Let's see if we can uh, open up those puppies uh, as fast as possible. I see 15, 6. If I get under the 14, I can open up these guys. I have an insurance ball there and probably even the 4 ball. Let's go for that. So, just focusing again the cue ball to the rail. There. And now, I want to see, ideally, I, like ideally it would be great to, to flick the, the, the 10 and open up these, then everything's open. But, if I just touch the 2 and 5, these balls are there, I can use the 8 ball to come there, so just touch the 2 and 5 is good enough, I think. Hallelujah! I only touched the 2, but... If I make the 11, let me see, if I make the 11, I can use the 1 and come around on this side for a little bit of a one pocket layout. So I got two clusters of balls. Let me see. I don't want to be careless here. It's when you get into trouble also, guys. I use if I use the eight. If I use the eight, just come up here, because I love this nine ball. If I just come up here, I can use the three or the ten. And then these two balls go in that pocket. I should be all right. Okay. Draw up there. Let's see. Okay. do two things. I can run into the five or I can play shape here on the three, come around and play him that way. Personal preference. Not too big of a deal. I'm just going to stun it up and play it around it. There. And you see my end game started to develop. I can pick up these two guys. And then I can pick up these two, and with this one I can do a lot. I can play a really great shape for the 7, or I can even pick up the 7 first. Many options. So I've played everything wide open now. So then you focus on taking care of your end game. Uh, let's see. Sometimes there's so many options, that's where it gets confusing for people. And a, a big tip is also, when you're confused, and you don't see the pattern, just start pocketing balls. And you think, what? Yep. If your brain's on freeze mode, just start pocketing balls, and you'll get loose again. And if you've pocketed three, four, five balls, then you will start seeing things develop. It might not have been the best 
solution on paper. But you know what? You have the ability to correct and come back even from a little bit of a poor start in the rack. So if you're on, really, if you're on freeze mode, pocket three, four bottles, and then you see how oh, I can use that one to open them up, then things will come on more automatic. Otherwise you get stuck. So here, I'm gonna pick up the seven, then use the four, two, 13, because I wanna demonstrate uh, using this ball as my final ball. So, just come to the middle of the table. Okay. There are many options here. I could even play 274. I can play 742. Let's play 274 this time. Just come above the four. We can come one rail up. We can go two rails to the middle of the table. The middle of the table is your friend on this 13. So just come above the four. That's the key here. Okay, that's good. I can go around the nine. One. Two and come into the shot on the 13. I like that too. Remember from the eight ball and nine ball pattern lessons. A little bit of high right. There, coming into the line. And watch here now, guys. The nine is not very close to the rack. So if I come on this side of the nine, it's easier to get a little bit of speed on the cue ball after making this ball. The further away the break balls from the rack, it becomes harder to open the rack. We need a really good angle and these inside angles like this, staying on the inside of the ball, is a very very good solution because you can hit this ball thinner which means you you have more energy in the cue ball to keep going and blast open the rack so i want to go two rails and come to the inside of this nine okay around the side pocket area here one so you see, it's very natural. This ball, if you look at it, you think, oh man, that ball is so far away. It's totally natural because you're coming into the shot that you want to have anyway. So keep that in mind. That, that's also, if the ball's here, even sometimes if it's on the spot, right? If I'm here and it's on the spot, I can go there. If I'm a little bit straight, I can draw it back. If I'm here, I can go one rail, two rails, same thing, many options, okay? So don't be afraid of that. <clears throat> okay, so we ran another rack. That puts us on 18. So that's only what, 600 more for John Schmidt's record? You guys have time today? <laughs> Let's get that going. No. Okay. So my theory and advice, you're on the inside of the nine ball. This would be parallel, this line. Okay. So you're on the inside of that. And my advice is for these kind of shots, Follow. Your mind is free. You don't have to think about anything. Don't think about where you're going to hit the rack anymore because it doesn't matter like draw or stun because you're using follow. The ball will go through the rack and you need that energy. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> 
So once more to sum it up, because it might be confusing. If you're on this side of parallel, then you want to look at, am I going to stun it or draw it or maybe a middle ball? If you're on this side, follow. Forget about anything else. Okay? Of course, there's exceptions, but that's the basic rule. And use a good top spin so it, it keeps that momentum going. Here we go. See what it's doing? I make contact with this side of the rack, the high side. The ball, if I would stun it, it would go there, but because the top spin it kind of does this and it kills. Beautiful spread, great control, and I'm back in business. Okay? So, immediately I see a group here that's still a problem. I see a break ball, the eight, but I cannot get to it very easily because of the six. However, there's a combination there. If I knock away the six, I can, uh, the eight, I can use the six as a breaker. So that's just an option. Um, body, 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 boo. These two balls are also blocking each other. The one cannot pass the 12. So don't wait too long with taking care of these two guys. It's a big thing. Uh, I see a great key ball for this breaker. However, however, I think I want to use it now. 14, 12. Stop the 12 because it's a great connector to this two ball to open up this problem. I can go into these balls and open them up a little bit more. I think that's a pretty smart play because if I go into them now, I could get stuck on all these balls. I'm not too sure about it. I could. Could or couldn't. Let's do the other one. Let's do 14 12 to demonstrate. Here we go. There. Just bounce off the rail almost where the 12 is now and then I've taken care of one of these two balls also that's fine okay I might not get the greatest action because these balls are just lined up so I'm thinking you remember the old game with with all the balls on a line and you and one hits the the whole line and just one comes out on the other side and it keeps going like that. Well, that's kind of the same thing here. So you can use that principle. These are all on one line. So I'm thinking only the 13 is really going to do much. So I might have to go into them again. Oh boy. Okay. That was really planned. Of course, learn something there, caught the high side of a ball, be careful of the scratch. Alrighty, um, let's keep it going, that's just how it is. Ball in hand, still deal with all this stuff here. Let me see, if I make the one, uh, the seven, I can make this combo. Come here for the 11 and go into, my, into the balls again. Or... Hmm. I could also shoot the combination. And go into the 3-4. It's not too bad. Hmm. 
think that's what I'm going to do. Shoot the combo, sitting straight in, running to this 3 4. There. Six came out a little bit too much. So I have to get ready maybe for another break shot. I see the five passes to the corner also, that's something to watch out for. Uh, I have a combination 10-15, so this looks like it's cluttered up, but it, it's not really. This is a problem, so I might want to shoot this five ball right away. Because it's not the hardest shot, and I take care of all the problems. Now for a break shot, hmm, what do we see? Let's take the rack. 13's not in the best position, you see that? It doesn't fit, but what's a good tip maybe is that perhaps we can knock it out a little bit. If it comes here, it's a great break shot. Is there a way we can take a chance on that? I'm thinking if I draw the 11, make contact with the 13, then there's a good chance. I think I want to do that. Can try. That's nice. That gives me a new breaker. Now I can shoot that combination. And I still have to be careful guys. These two balls are kind of blocking each other. I can use the three to play here for the six, then the seven, but I also need a good key ball for my 13. I could use the two ball perhaps, the one and the two. If I make the one come here for the 2, I'm sitting really nice for the 13. So let's see, I'm going to make this combo, play shape for the 3 ball I think. Okay, interesting. So what I'm seeing here, 10, 3, 6, 7, 4. <clears throat> and then it's decision time on the 4. Do I, I want to play 4, 1, and 2. Do I play the 4, come here for the 1, or come here for the 1? That's what I'm not sure about. First, I want to take care of the first couple of shots. 10. See, I can use the 3 to come for the... Six. There. Stop, stop. If you can find stop shot patterns, then you're playing really good straight pull. All right, decision time, guys. What do we do? Pretty slick new cloth still, so I'm going to get a lot of action this way. I think I can do it though. If I come here, I can just go one rail there. Nice. Alright. Here, big tip. It's better to be too straight on this one. Then not enough angle. If you're straight on the one, that's okay. You can still just roll the two in. You're going to have a great angle. If you're here, 
Now you have to come to the other side, back and forth again. A lot more work. So try to come here. Pretty nice. So, if we roll this one in, cue ball will come here. And this is a great classic key ball, break ball example. You can go so many ways you can get on the 13. You can stun it over, off the rail, draw it up, you name it. There we go. So I'm a little bit low, so this time I will choose to go off the rail. And I think I want to stay again on the inside of the 13 because it makes it easier. I don't have to think about anything. Just follow the 13, boom, into the rack. I don't have to look at the rack. There. That was about 12 balls. My high run is 416, so I was hoping that I could pull off a 100 ball run while talking. <laughs> but that's also a mental trap, right? From the mental course. In Mental Match Play, the chapter. There's a whole section on mental traps, and one of them is expectations. Because I ran 400, doesn't mean I just show up and run a 100 like this while talking. That expectation might be a little bit too high. I can do it, but I can't just expect it. Because then, I'm putting a lot of pressure on myself. Expectations cause pressure, and expectations, here's the sneaky trick, they make you more passive, because Expecting something is not a goal. You're sitting on your ass waiting for it to happen instead of making it happen. So, if you're interested in that, the mental course, guys, big tip. Straight pull has a lot of mental little traps where things look easy and now you're out of position, boom, end of run. <clears throat> So, nice break ball again, remember we are on the inside of parallel, which means we can follow the ball, we don't have to look at the rack, we can have a free mind, nice high ball, and just let it rip through it. That happens, however, a lot of times when the cue ball comes down, there's also a ball that comes down with it. That's not luck, it's just, it's just sometimes a layout thing uh, and the reaction of the balls. And you will get balls over the corners. So, I'm a little bit low, but I have good recovery shots. Uh, so, looking at this layout... I have no break shot yet, maybe the 6, but I have to get all the way here, not easy. Uh, the 15 is a little bit too much here, if it was here it would be good. Mm. However, I can use, for example, the 1 ball to push the 8 ball out a little bit, that would be great. But I'm still stuck with these three balls. So, let me see. I can use the four to get really nice on the one. Kick out the eight, that's one part of the puzzle. Maybe then I can use the two to draw into these two balls, or three balls. So first I have to make a 
recovery shot, which I can use the 10. I think I will just let my stroke out. Boom, boom, boom. Try to come here, not baby it. I can use the 4 or come back for the 6. I like to let my stroke out a little bit on these. There. Um, let's see. I like this 1-8 guys, I really like that, so if I come off the rail, come off the rail, try to put the cue ball where the 4 is now. See that's speed control training, that's what you're going to learn and you're going to get much better at by playing this game. It's great for speed control. So now I want to hit this side of the 8. Bring that out. There. Let's see. Still in Problem. I was hoping I was I was hoping I could get an angle right away of two to draw into them. I don't. Um, so I can go into the fourteen with the six. If I get on the six nicely, I can do that. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to draw it out, let the stroke out again, <clears throat> probably use one of these two balls, that's what I was thinking. Okay, this rack isn't over yet. I can also use the 15 now to draw into them. What do you think, guys? It's not too bad. Six could be a little bit better for control. So if I get here on the rail. Just a little bit easier, I think. Too hard. Hey! Making a little bit of a mess. I have another chance with this 11. Try to get on this rail. It's the key now. Making a mess a little bit here. Can use the seven. I got one more chance now. Use the seven. Come there. Come on, boys and girls. Oof. Wow. So, plan B, I have to use the 8 to go into them and perhaps I can get the 14 to become a new break ball. 
Turn it over. All right. So I think here, guys, this is interesting. If I just hit the 14 and the 14 doesn't hit anything, then I can still make the 3. And if the 14 just hits the 9 or the 3, I believe they will open up nicely also. Okay, 14 is a breaker. I have the 12 and I was going to have the 15. So, another decision moment. Let's hit the 9. 15 is a backup ball. If I hit it really sweet, they're going to open up. was the backup. See that? There it is. Uh, now we have a little bit of a trickier key ball. Because I will have to I will have to play shape for the nine now I think. Otherwise I have to blast it around for the three. That would be great for the nine. Uh, however I don't really think it's a straight pull stroke because we're shooting these medium strokes and now I have to go boom, boom, boom. I think it's a little bit too risky. It's a lot of movement. If I can come here for the nine, come back for the three, I can play pretty easily to the inside of the 14. It looks a little bit tricky now, but if I end up anywhere here on the three, that's pretty uh, high success rate. So just draw it back for the nine a little bit. <laughs> Too much. It's okay. Draw off the rail, come here. Make sure you don't hit that 14. Recovery, speed control, remember, and here. Now, big tip, if you're just using follow, you're coming too close to the 14, and you could end up here with no shot. If you put too much right on it, you might scratch in the side. So you want to put maybe one tip of right. If it's a clock, it would be one o'clock. Two o'clock would end up here. 12 o'clock here, 1 o'clock you end up on this diamond and come back out. Speed control again. See, 1 o'clock, diamond, point. Okay? We're on the board. We've got another nice break shot on the inside of our line 14 balls there and let's do what do we have Let's do one more rack, guys. And then if you have any questions, I can answer a few questions. So we'll do one more rack and then a QA. Ten minutes. Okay. So this guy is a little bit low, but because I'm still on the inside, 
I can pretty much close my eyes, follow it, and it's freedom. Put a nice stroke into it, I don't have to look at the rack, just hit them nice and crisp with enough follow. Bit of a cluttered up there. We got a nice starter. Five still goes, so that's good. Maybe the 13 as a breaker. See if we can make anything else happen. I think I'm gonna play 15 2, get this five out. See if I can open up something. The seven's laying really nice to open up this. And the six is a backup ball. After I come in here, I can shoot that way. That's what I'm thinking I'm gonna do. That looks even better. Up, 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 up. Too soft. Speed control, guys. Let's see. I really like that seven, so I'm gonna try and draw back for the two again. Place a uh, glance off the thirteen. Thirteen's already a breaker, but I still need to open up this chisel. Uh, no, I like that seven enough. Boom, 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 boom. I'm going to sacrifice this 13 because the seven's laying so good. And I'm guaranteed I feel to get another break shot. So two seven. Six is there. I want to fall. If I hit the one. I think the one's coming out. There. That's nice. One is a breaker. I can do... C... 11, 6, 5. Many good options here. Take care of that little problem. See a nice end pattern which is come around let's see boom boom I see two patterns three eight uh, three eight twelve ten four right if I'm here on the ten all I have to do is draw just a hair for the four and remember we're on the right side of the table and we're coming into the line on one, that's great. Or I could do three, four, eight, twelve, ten, and just draw it over a hair. Personal preference, both can work really good. Twelve, 
bit too low. I think I can just get there off the rail, back to the same spot. Come here. This is what I want to demonstrate. By making this ball, I'm coming into the nice line on the correct side that I already want to be at. See, I'm coming into that line and I have a really nice break shot. All right, I hope you learned something there. That was uh, challenging for me. Coming right out of the gate with a miscue. <laughs> it caught me off guard a little bit. But hey, I got some tricky racks, so it was interesting. It wasn't just tapping away balls. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, let me hear some questions if you have them. Uh, woo, nice comments, guys. Any questions? Two more minutes. Guys, if you have any straight through questions, please ask them. Everybody can benefit from them because this will be on YouTube forever. So if you have anything about key balls, break balls, I will just put up a couple of like key ball examples. This is a really high class straight cool example, classic one, because you can mix and match whatever you want. You can take uh, 12 seven one or you can take one seven twelve very classic both break balls are around the spot area totally fine now one that i love to do personally let's say i got this breaker i got a shot in front of the side like this and i got a ball on this end rail for example and then even maybe i have a ball here a ball in the kitchen I can pick off this ball, play shape with this ball, stop, stop, great shape, right? So a ball in front of the side works super good. Uh, these are really classic examples, two rails around, you have to do a little bit more work than a stop shot. These work really well, one rail, uh, rail around, uh, rail, rail, rail around. <laughs> what else? Uh, yeah, we spoke about these. You know, don't be afraid. Shot like this. This works really nice. Shots in the kitchen. Remember, we spoke about that earlier. You can do so much with this ball. One reel. One reel. Draw it back. Two reels around. You know, these shots work really good too, um, as key balls, what else, nice key ball, ball on the same side, this can work good too for an end game, let's say you couldn't take this ball out, now you're here, boom, 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 right, just a couple of examples for key balls. Uh, Guys, that's it. If you have any more questions, write them down in the comments. Uh, private lessons are available uh, online via Skype. Uh, send me a personal message if you're interested. I can make training plans for you guys. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. PayPal donations are welcome, of course. Uh, the links are below in the description. Uh, what else? If you have any requests, for other drills or tips or tricks, let me know. Take care and I'll see you soon.